This video provides the solution and discussions for exercise 4, which was about extracting a variable from a file in the era interim dataset. It's assumed that you've already watched the first video describing the task, and this video shows the details of how to do it. So, just a reminder about our scenario and our objectives for this task. So in this case, I'm working on a project studying global cloud cover, and I've identified that the era interim data set held in the CEDA archive is a suitable data source. The data files contain a large set of variables, and I want to run a command line tool called CDO that I know can extract individual variables. And so I'm interested in extracting the TCC or total cloud cover variable for a given date and time. In terms of the objectives, um, after completing this task, I should be able to locate data from the CEDAR archive on the Jasmine file system, to run a command line tool to extract data from the CEDAR archive, and I should be able to write output files to a Jasmine group workspace. So I'll skip through to the cheat sheet section and this gives us a description of how I might go about completing the task. So I will just resize this window so that we can see it at the same time as viewing a terminal window. So here we go, our starting point is being logged into a Jasmine login server. So in this case, I'm logged into jasmine to login1.jasmine.ac.uk and I want to SSH to one of the scientific analysis servers or SI servers. Um, so in this case, I'm going to choose SI5. And as you can see, when I log in, I, I get to see a list of all the SI servers that are available. And it actually tells me how many users there are, how much free memory there is, how much um, CPU is being used on those servers. So that's very useful information to start with. OK, so in this case, I'm interested in working with data in the era interim data set. So I may have found this by looking in the CEDA catalog. Um, and I've identified that the surface analyses for era interim sit under this path here, beginning slash BADC slash ECMWF era interim. And I've also found out there are subdirectories um, give the, that present the data via year, month, then day. So that allows me to locate the input file I need for January 2017, um, 1st January 2017 at midnight. So I can actually pick up the full path here to this NetCDF file. And I will just list that that exists. And that exists on Jasmine. Um, it might also be worth us just looking at the file permissions on this. And we can see that this is owned by BADC. And the Unix group related to this is the open group. So this data is provided under an open license. And any Jasmine login account that has a Cedar um, user account linked to it will automatically have access to this open group and be able to read any data that is stored under the open license. OK, so I'm going to just set a variable here in the in the terminal shell. So my input file is this surface gridded file for January the 1st, 2017 um, and 00, 0 100 hours, so midnight. OK, the next thing I want to do is decide on my output file path. So in all of these exercises, we are using the workshop group workspace. And so that has this path here. And then within that, each individual user can create their own directory where they do their own work. So I can set this another variable here, output file. And that is setting this path for where I'm going to write the output NetCDF file. 
So an important distinction here is that anything beginning slash BADC is read only. You're not allowed to write at all and, you, and you're not able to write to anything under that part of the file system. But depending on what access you have, you may have one or more group workspaces that you do have write access to as well as read access. So I should have write access to my output file path here. And it's important also that I make the directory structure under which I'm going to write the output. So I'm just going to take the directory path there and running uh, make dir with minus p will create any parent di directories required. So it's worth saying at this point as well that the dollar user environment variable is my Jasmine login account username. And so that, that this path will work for any username because it will just translate it into your own username. So we've now defined an input file path, an output file path, and made the directory where we're going to write the output. The next thing we need to do is activate a software environment. So we're interested in running the CDO tool. And it turns out that that's available in the standard Jaspi environment available on Jasmine. So I can do module load Jaspi. And that sets um, various environment variables, including my path, um, which will allow me to find the, the tools and libraries I'm interested in. So if I type CDO now, I get the help information for the CDO command, and I can see that's now available. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the CDO tool to extract the TCC variable. Now, of course, I wouldn't expect you to just know how to do this, um, but you can go and look at the CDO manual and find out about all the subcommands available. It turns out that if I want to extract a NetCDF variable via its ID, so in this case TCC, I need to use the cell name subcommand, which means select by name. And so in order to run the command, I can say CDO cell name comma TCC and then I give it the input file path, and the output file path, press enter, and it executes the command. It gives me a little bit of output here, but not that much. But what I can do is now I can do a listing on the output file path and check that it exists. And there I have an output netcdf file. It's about half a megabyte in size, so it has written something. But I want to just confirm that this is a valid netcdf file before I finish. So I'm going to use this ncdump command. And ncdump is a really nice command line tool that allows you to interrogate the contents of a netcdf file. So I'm using minus h, which will just show us the header. And here we can see the tcc variable has been written. And there's other information about the various coordinate variables and the dimensions of that data set. Now that we've completed the tasks, let's have a look at some of the alternative approaches and best practice guidance. So this exercise has demonstrated how we can log into Jasmine and access the scientific analysis servers or the SCI servers. It's demonstrated how we can find and um, activate software environments and then run command line tools interactively to read data from the CEDA archive and to write it to one of the Jasmine group workspaces. Now, this is a basic workflow that's suitable for many small tasks and for setting up more sophisticated processing. When the amount of processing increases, then it makes good sense to move to using the Lotus batch cluster, and we'll be demonstrating this in exercise five. In terms of alternative approaches, you could alternatively use the CEDA OpenDAP server to extract a single variable from a, a bigger data file such as this. You could use other tools to run the extraction. Um, so you could use other Python libraries um, such as Iris, CF Python, or X-Array. Um, and you could, of course, run the job as a batch job on Lotus. Um, one best practice consideration for this kind of um, work is just to just to make sure that you haven't let, accidentally left any files on the file system um, that need cleaning up. So there are some tools that may cache temporary files 
in slash temp um, that can cause a problem if there are lots of users on a single node on Lotus or a single Psi server um, where processes are leaving data around in, in the temporary directory. So please just make sure that you're aware of, of any side effects of your what your code is doing so you don't do that. Let's have a look at some of the questions that were asked earlier. So question one was where can you find out more about software environments available on Jasmine? So the Jasmine help pages include an article about software on Jasmine, and this include links to details of Jaspi and other software environments that are available. Um, so you can, you can see here there's details of, of Jaspi, which involves various Python environments. And then there's another software environment called Jasmine Sci. And then there are some other additional packages um, available elsewhere. And you can scroll down and follow more links to find out more about these things. Question two, can you find out which other packages are available within the Jaspi environment? So yes, you can. So the Jaspi environments are listed on our help pages and you can follow links from there to find out about each particular release of Jaspi and what the content of that was and what's in each environment. So if I go through to the Jaspi page here, you can find out how to activate and use the Jaspi environments. You can find out which ones are available and then we can actually follow it all the way through to a particular version of Jaspi. And if we click here, we can get a full listing of all the packages and all the versions that made up that particular environment. So that brings us to the end of this video. If you need any further information, we have some links here um, that will take you through to the Jasmine website and the help documentation. Please have a look in the help documentation first to see if you can find what you're looking for. But if you can't find the answer there, then by all means contact us at the Jasmine help desk email address given here.